In Hotspot 2.0, it really had its genesis in a couple different things, right? The, the first one was the cellular operators. They were bringing iPhones onto their networks. They were bringing Android devices onto their networks. And as the popularity of that grew, those cellular networks became really congested. And what the, what the operators needed to do is they needed to offload some of that traffic. So they started looking at Wi-Fi technology as a way to offload. And that was really the first time where carriers thought Wi-Fi might be really a good thing for us. The issue was is that when people took their laptops to coffee shops or to airports or things like that to get on Wi-Fi, it was hard. You, you know, you had to know how to bring up your connection manager, you had to know what an SSID was. Heaven forbid there might be five SSIDs there and you had to choose which one and which one did you choose. It was really confusing to users. Contrast that to the GSM network. In GSM technology, we've all had the experience where you fly abroad, you get off the plane and you turn your phone on. And in a matter of a minute or something, you're on their network, you can make a call, you get billed for it, everything's been taken care of. Why couldn't Wi-Fi be the same way? Well, we thought it could. We just needed the right technology. We needed to apply that technology to Wi-Fi. And that was the second part of Hotspot 2.0 making Wi-Fi as secure and automatic to use as cellular. When Hotspot 2.0 started, we knew we had a secure technology. The Wi-Fi Alliance had it branded under WPA2 Enterprise. That really was comprised of three things. 802.1x, 802.11i, which was the AirLink encryption, and EAP authentication. And the EAP authentication was, uh, of course, they've been done by the IETF. It's been standardized by the IETF for a long time. But that whole WPA2 enterprise technology, that's been used in enterprises very successfully for a number of years. Why wasn't that applied to public Wi-Fi networking? You know, there's a lot of people in the industry felt that it should have been and should be applied to Wi-Fi public networking. And so that's what we did. What we needed was something different. We needed the network to tell the phone, here's the credentials that I can uh, that I can authenticate. 802.11u provides a way that the hotspot network can advertise who its roaming partners are and then the phone can say oh I have a credential from that operator or I have a credential from this operator. It completely takes the trial and error out of it and makes a scalable way for the phone to automatically and securely get onto a hotspot network. The connection manager is doing a bunch of things on the user's behalf. So the first thing that happens is when the user walks into this hotspot, the phone wakes up and sees, huh, I see an access point there. The access point is beaconing to the phone, I'm a hotspot 2.0 hotspot. Immediately the phone knows, the connection manager knows, that the hotspot is going to advertise to me its roaming partners. I can ask and get those roaming partners. Then I can look through the list of credentials that I have stored and determine immediately that I can get onto the network. Once the connection manager has determined that, it just goes ahead and does the WPA2 enterprise connection sequence. It authenticates to the network, it generates crypto keys, and secures the air link, and boom, the device is on the network. What did the user do? Nothing. It's the automatic part that both is great for users because they don't have to do anything. It's great for the mobile network operators because it actually does get the users off their cellular network and can offload the traffic. And it's great for the venue operators that can offer services over Wi-Fi to their customers. When the Wi-Fi line started a number of years ago, and sometimes we refer to them as a WFA, the main concern that they had was interoperability. And what they really wanted to bring was certified interoperability. Hotspot 2.0 is a program in the Wi-Fi Alliance, and it's a technology. But when the certification came out, Wi-Fi Alliance decided they wanted to brand that under the name Passpoint. So when you hear Passpoint, think certified device. When you hear Hotspot 2.0, think technology and program. There's another industry organization called the Wireless Broadband Alliance, sometimes referred to as the WBA. The WBA really is an organization of carriers that have a focus on Wi-Fi networks. The Wireless Broadband Alliance wants the carriers to do trials of equipment and, and they want to know that the equipment works well in a carrier environment. 
And so it's much more of an organization for the carriers uh, to make sure that the equipment will do what they need it to do for the running their business. When the Wi-Fi Alliance first started looking at the Hotspot 2.0 program, they had one big release. It became clear that we should break it up into two releases. The first release should focus on roaming and authentication. Release one launched in June of 2012. After June of 2012, the Wi-Fi Alliance started working on release two. The uh, themes of release two were called online signup and operator policy. Operator policy for network selection. So the idea there is that a carrier will want to put some policy on the phone that will influence the connection manager in which Wi-Fi hotspot to select. What the policy allows an operator to do is help control its roaming costs because it has to pay for those wholesale operations and the transfer and the transit of all those packets through the visiting network. In online signup, uh, basically what it allows the infrastructure to do is put a credential on the phone and put operator policy for network selection on the phone as well. Now, imagine you're a cable operator, an MSO. You have customers that you need to actually bring onto your network. You need to give them credentials and policies so they can operate. Well, that's what this is used for. Imagine that you're a laptop. You don't have a SIM card. Or imagine that you're a tablet. A tablet doesn't have a SIM card either. Well, these, these devices, to bring them onto the operator networks, they need to be provisioned with credentials. And operators each have their favorite kind of credential, be it a username and password, be it a SIM if you're a cellular operator, or perhaps a, an X509 certificate if you're a WISP. But you can put those on, on the phone and then on the device uh, and then you know, basically bring that device into your network smoothly and securely from then on. The operators are getting familiar with the technology. They're testing the technology in their labs. I see that the carriers are going through this, this phase right now where they're looking at it very carefully. Um, the, the trials that are going in in the, on in the WBA I think are really crucial to that whole process because um, you know, through that and through the support of the manufacturing community, they'll see a positive user experience and, and they'll, they'll see the benefits that Hotspot 2.0 is intended to bring. I think one of the great things about Hotspot 2.0 is it's not just for carriers, it's for enterprises. Imagine if you're the manager of a retail store or a shopping mall or an airport. Do you want customers on your Wi-Fi networks automatically and securely? Absolutely you do. You go into the hotel the first day, you're there, you enter your room number and you say you want Wi-Fi service. Well, we all do that today, but the problem is every time you go back to use the Wi-Fi again, you have to re-enter your room number. You have to remember to bring up your browser. With Hotspot 2.0, you do that once the day you're there. Then no matter where you go in the hotel, your device will automatically connect. We think in terms of roaming relationships, uh, carrier to carrier, because that's the way we've always thought about it, right? But that's not necessarily going to be that way in the future. Roaming relationships are between two public Wi-Fi operators, an airport to a carrier, a shopping mall to a carrier, a shopping mall to a Google, a shopping mall to an Apple, a passenger terminal to somebody else. It opens up identity services, and I think we'll probably even see new identity providers coming out of this. That's very exciting to me because I think Hotspot 2.0 can really transform the public Wi-Fi networking industry.